Thank you, Roisin. So I have to say, I feel incredibly proud to be here today um, and to you know, open and chair the event. It's a phenomenal feeling when I walked in this morning into the building and the venue, just to see where we've achieved in terms of the venue, the place, the people. It's grown to such a phenomenal amount and we're really moving on a mission in terms of getting women in data up there. Um, <clears throat> today I'm going to talk a little bit around you know, what's happened in the industry over the, 12 over the last 12 months. But I think we've got a tremendous lineup of speakers during the day. And you know, make the most out of it. Make sure you network during the day and, um, and speak to people that you don't know um, before you came in this morning. Or, yeah. So I do want to say that um, we've really come, come far in the last 12 months of Women in Data. And there have been some big industry changes um, in organizations where since last year, people have come to me saying, you know, tell me a little bit more about it. Should I be thinking about this going forwards? And I think the more and more we talk about it going forwards, the bigger this will get. So I want to start by um, talking about the last 12 months. There's been the good, the bad, and the ugly. So some of the good things that have happened, we've had game-changing games that have come out into the market like Pokemon. It's built around data. It looks at where people are going. It tells you about interests and sites that are happening. And um, it, it truly has been a game-changer. You've got organizations like Sainsbury's that um, have started to think about analytics and data. And they've hired a chief data officer into their organization more and more organizations are beginning to think about that, which is great to see. And then you've got Walmart. They actually had some life-changing analytics this year. There's been a lot of hurricanes, as you've read about in the, in the paper. And actually, their analytics team found that to ensure they were set up in the right way, not only did they need to stock torches and you know, things that would help you from a safety standpoint, but they also needed to stock strawberry pop-tarts, because that was the thing people were stocking in their cupboards to make sure that if they couldn't go out to a store, um, that was what they were, they were going to have in their cupboards. So there's been some truly groundbreaking things that are happening that entertain us, that will make a difference to our lives, and actually save lives in some cases. Not everything has been great, though. This happened. Put your hand up in this room if you predicted this was going to happen. Very few. You know, you won't believe the number of um, analysts um, that were behind all the, all the insights, you know, not only for the polls, but in the banks, you know, in the, the broader industry, trying to predict what was going to happen. And only a couple of people got it right. Then we move on to the ugly. Truly. You know, it's another pollster story, but again, a huge amount of analytics that sat behind it, and we all got it wrong. Did anyone in this room get it right? And did anyone get both of them right? <coughs> very, very few. So it, it has been a phenomenal year, and actually it raises the game in terms of where analytics is being talked about. So moving on to, to my last 12 months, it started in an incredible way um, earlier this year when I was crowned um, the most influential person in data in the industry. You know, it was a tremendous feeling, and I, I can't describe it more than just it was overwhelming. In that, you know, with your male, your female counterparts out there, they're saying, you know, you're the one that's the most influential. And that really changed my life in some ways. Of, you know, I felt incredibly proud of the team. Um, that were working for me in Barclay Card at that time, um, you know, because we got the recognition in terms of what we'd achieved and worked so hard to get to. Um, but at the same time, it was the fact that people would come to you and ask you for your opinion on analytics and organisations. It was, it was truly a life-changing moment for me. So much so, I then decided to take a step back and just think about my life a little bit. And I made the big decision of leaving Barclays. And this was actually my last day um, with Barclays, where in the end, it was just jump up high. I didn't know what I was going to do, but the, the view was, it's new beginnings. I've got no idea, but I'm going to go there. Probably a bit different to what I talked about last year, of always having a plan, because I really didn't have a plan at that point. 
But um, sometimes, I guess, you do need to jump into the unknown and just see what happens. So what I did from last year is um, I then decided I didn't want to jump from one corporate being there for 16 years to jumping straight into another corporate. So after some months off where I had my pyjama days and you know, just relaxed and hung around London and did some touristy things, I actually decided to open up um, my own business and start my own consultancy firm. And it's been great because I've been able to um, define who I want to work for, go into organizations that truly need the help in terms of insight into analytics and um, how to do it in the way that's going to pay back for the organization. I've worked for a startup that had five customers. Um, I've worked for a charity. I've also worked for a, um, another challenger bank in the UK. And one of the other things that I did was I found myself in this meeting room. I was working for a private equity firm in New York. I was flown over to New York for 22 hours. And I walked into this room in the morning and uh, I hadn't ever seen a boardroom this big. It was 50 chairs wide. And I thought, wow, this is totally a new experience for me. And then people started to come in. It was 9 o'clock in the morning. I'd flown the previous night, slept suddenly in this meeting room. And um, I looked around the table as we were about to kick off. Can anyone guess out of the 50 seats how many women were in that room? Spot on, it was just me. And they positioned me right in the middle of this meeting room, round this board table, um, because I was there as an expert in terms of analytics. And I kind of looked around at nine o'clock and I thought, my goodness, this is, this is different. I knew private equity was a different place, but I wasn't expecting this. But again, you know, a lot of the things that we have to do as, as women is take a deep breath and think, I know what I'm talking about. It's okay, what's the worst that can happen? Um, so, I think my reflection over the last 12 months has truly been phenomenal, um, both in terms of the things that we've seen in the industry, but then also, um, you know, my own personal journey as to where I'm at now. So, moving forwards in terms of one of my reflections that I've seen um, as I've been out in these different organisations is many different um, companies and um, industries are thinking about how do they move up the analytical maturity curve. You know, many people are saying, well, we're down their pile in terms of either being reactive, proactive. Of course, we hear about big data. We know we need to be strategic. Kind of help us to get there. How do we do it? And that's a question that a lot of people are absolutely asking. My perspective is that there are four building blocks that enable you to go up the analytical maturity curve. You've got people, you've got culture and behavior, You've got data capability, which comes to technology, and then you've also got methodology. Now, when I've been asked to go into organizations to help, a lot of them have said, the brief is, we need new technology to help us get to that predictive capability. We need to move on big data. And actually, my biggest learning over the last 12 months is in the majority of those cases, it actually wasn't a technology issue. It was broader than that in terms of go and recruit the right people create the right culture and behaviors to enable you to get the best out of analytics and also change the methodology in the way that you're working. The world has become faster paced and actually no longer do analysts sit in a dark room by themselves. It's really important that you encourage and enable collaboration to happen in org organization. And so that's kind of been my, my biggest reflection in that technology isn't the thing that's going to change this industry but it's those four things in unison, but let's not forget about the weight on some of the softer elements that not all leaders in an analytics are thinking about. And I think this cartoon kind of summarizes it for me in terms of what I hear so much of, of how am I going to work with big data? But truly, if you find yourself in one of these meetings, make sure that you have those four building blocks in your mind and ask and challenge with the right question. I guess, you know, those are a little bit of my perspective of over the last 12 months. But thinking about the next 12 months, what's going to happen in the industry? You know, we read a lot and hear a lot about AI, machine learning, decision science. It's going to take over the world. 
And actually, my, my take to you is, let's not forget about the human touch. So how we merge um, analytics with human decision-making is probably one of the biggest challenges in analytics today. But what I'd encourage you to do in this room is not see it as a challenge, but an opportunity. Because these are the leadership traits we naturally have as individuals in this room. So it just underpins the importance of diversity in organizations, in teams, but in analytics. And this is the strength we can bring as individuals to, to that mission. Um, so just don't forget that as, as you come out of this room today and out of the conference, of um, that is the space that we can play. And we should continually challenge the, that space to really make sure that companies and organizations are making the right decisions. So the rules of the conference today are pretty simple. We are going to inspire and educate ourselves and each other. It's that simple. We really hope that at the end of the day, you're inspired to go and do even more in terms of greatness. Raise the bar, continue to challenge yourself in terms of you know, what you can achieve. You know, just remember my experience of when I was in that meeting room with 49 guys and me, you know, you do need to sometimes take a deep breath and say, I can do this. And that's what we hope you're going to feel like as you walk out of that room today. So enjoy the conference. Make sure you network, like I said before, and make, out, make the most out of the off opportunity of being in this fantastic location with the tremendous amount of talent that we are in this room today. Thank you. What an incredible year, hey? Indeed. Massively so. Um, you're going to be thrilled to know that Paul's here throughout the entire day. I really want to encourage you to go and introduce yourselves, say hello. Um, you can also tweet her and uh, use the hashtag WomenInData in your tweet, please.